Penn State football, a tradition of excellence for over 130 years. Welcome to Nittany Nation Rewind. Some things change and some things stay the same. This imposing structure is not completely lifeless in the summer. They spent years and years building and building. This is the story of the first and maybe the best team to ever get it done. Dan Marino and Pitt, we played Nebraska, we played Notre Dame, at Notre Dame we played uh, we played them all. We played Boston College and Doug Flutie up there. They were not perfect. I think we had some luck. Maybe they had some luck. But they were champions. Going for the bundle. Garrity. Touchdown. Three, two, one. And State wins it. So many things have to go right to win a championship. We were really, really a close group of fellows. Rowing in the same direction. Nittany Nation Rewind starts right now. Hey, hi, hello. Welcome back to Nittany Nation Rewind. I'm Peter Terpstra, standing on a box. Two boxes. Two boxes. And I'm Jack Washer. We'll save the short jokes for later. Sorry, yep, Peter. that's real. Because right now, we have to tell you a championship tale. So many Penn State teams came close, but this one was the first to get it done. We bring you the story of the 1982 Penn State football team. It will forever be the team that brought home Penn State's first national championship and what a year it was. The 1982 season started with promise. The team had a win uh, over rival Temple. They held off Boomer Sison and the Maryland Terps and they blew out Rutgers to move to 3-0. That set the stage for the Huskers to come to town. On a late September afternoon, Penn State began its gauntlet of opponents when second-ranked Nebraska and the legendary Tom Osborne waltzed into Happy Valley. Blackledge play action. The Nittany Lions controlled the pace of the game twice, storming out to a 14-point lead. Blackledge on second down and eight over the middle, and it is caught for the touchdown. But each time, Nebraska punched right back and would take a 24-21 lead with less than two minutes to play, setting the table for a drive to remember. Be in that huddle, we had to go you know, the length of the field and have Todd Blackledge uh, call, you know, the calmness, the focus, the, hey, you know, let's, this is it. This is what we came to Penn State for. With just 13 seconds left and Penn State at the Nebraska 17, chaos ensued. So many things have to go right to win a championship. There were some controversial calls, allegedly. Todd Blackledge hit Mike McCloskey at the two-yard line. Or did he? As I say to everybody, the rest said I was. I've seen the diagrams of the Penn State field that friends have made fun of, you know, with it, where it sticks out in a couple different places along the sidelines. I don't think it's as big a stretch as some people might think that I was in bounds because I was dragging my back foot. But yeah, I'll, you know, <laughs> You know, why not? I'll say I was in. One play later, Blackledge found Kirk Bowman as Bedlam broke out at Beaver Stadium. Penn State winners 27 to 24. That last drive to win the game at home and to go, go out there and do it um, is something I'll never forget. So Penn State immediately had a bye week after that win. The team was riding high, just took down the number two team in the country. Penn State actually bumped up to number three during the bye week and had to head to the Simi South for its next game in Birmingham, Alabama. This game should be something. Legion Field. Penn State walked into the house of the Bear, Paul Bear Bryant, and fourth-ranked Alabama, a game the Nittany Lions quickly knew they were in for a long day. You've got to face adversity, whether it's a football season or in life. The frustration we had there was Despite all the mistakes we made, we were only trailing in that game 27 to 21 with about six minutes left. But then the floodgates opened. Oh, he hit his own man! Patrick to the five, touchdown! Blackledge back. Muskie did say it is picked off by Lowe. Eddie Lowe. Lowe to the five, touchdown! Penn State suffered its first loss of the season, 42 to 21. 
but it's what happened afterwards that would change the course of the season. The decisive moment of that season was in that locker room at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. We were humiliated. And at that point in time, with the leadership of, in particular, I remember Joel Coles gave one of the most fiery, emotional um, speeches in the locker room saying, this is not over. Joel's words really were impactful. We came back from uh, Birmingham determined to, to go to work that following Monday and, and it uh, and unfolded under, after that. And it was also Bear Bryant's final year coaching at Alabama. They have a, an excellent football team. I don't really, I know how good they are. I don't like how good we are. Uh, I think that uh, both sides had a lot of big plays. And uh, I think we had some luck. And maybe they had some luck. I understand you're a contestant in the Joe Paterno Lookalike Contest. I am Joe Paterno. <laughs> Coming up next, even the tailgating was serious. Sometimes you have to throw down in the parking lot, too. That's next. Plus, one verse two in New Orleans. We bring you the catch and what happened next.